Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We'll wait until about five after to get started. Um, you can add, if you can add your name and any agenda items to the meeting notes, be appreciated. Uh, meeting notes have been shared in the Zoom chat. All right. Greetings, everyone. We'll get started. And does anyone have anything to add to the agenda? I'll repost it in the Zoom chat. There we go. Please add your names to the meeting notes. Uh, I was checking. Uh, I was reading something in the, in the morning regarding Nomad. Uh, so I just uh, question if uh, we also co consider Nomad as a thing to consider in this, uh, this working group. Uh, what do you think? 
what is the working group? I mean, uh, the project? NOMAD, the HashiCorp uh, NOMAD project. NOMA? NOMAD. Okay. Uh, let me post the, in the chat the, the article because it's talking, it's talking about, uh, about uh, multiple interfaces mm -hmm. using uh, CNI plugins. I don't know if, uh, uh, let me see. It's, uh, Kind of the oh, no, form. all right. All right. Sure. <clears throat> Anything else? No, no, that's it. Thanks. We have two victors on the call today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Victor Lou, welcome. Is this your first time on the call, Victor? Uh, second, Victor Lou, you're actually the first here today. Yeah, first time, yeah. Where, where are you from? Uh, I'm in Tampa Independent. Uh, try, I'm just trying to learn. Used to work in telecom, so uh, just looking around at this point now. Where can I contribute? All right. So this is one of um, CNCS Telecom Initiatives, um, Cloud Native Network Function Working Group, and our focus. I guess the pa the past year has been on around best practices and related context uh, for telecom use cases. So this is telecom applications workloads is really what we've been primarily looking at, but that does extend into other things like um, when you're looking at multi-interface stuff like this Nomad that was just put forward, that it'll start looking at what could be referred to as a platform. Some in the Kubernetes uh, community think of Kubernetes just as a, an, a framework. So you could think of it as um, applications that go from hardware all the way up um, and larger platforms can be thought of as just a lot of applications that coordinate and work together. But we've primarily been working on the best practices, use cases, and discussing things around the workload. So from telecom workload standpoint, and then uh, working back from there. Uh, there's some other initiatives, probably the biggest one, if, if you haven't heard about it, would be the CNF certification from CNCF, which is taking um, test from another initiative called the CNF Test Suite, that are checking on application behavior and attributes, work uh, workload attributes. And it looks at some that we think are essential, like um, different different attributes that we think every everything should follow. And then some would be more of like bonuses and good behavior or maybe indicators that you're looking at practices. So that's the main area. Then there's, uh, I think, the intention uh, that we have, and I think a lot of the folks already are doing it on their own, is to collaborate with other groups. So looking at stuff within Linux Foundation, like Anikit Project, and then Nefio, Nephi, um, which is focused on automation um, of workload deployments and the management of them to some extent and other orgs outside like Silva and other things. So quick little overview for you. Do you, do you have any questions or? Yeah, I know it is. Telecom definitely has been on the cutting edge of the open stack and now Kubernetes. Uh, all the industry probably, telecom is always on the cutting edge. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm interested, I guess, to listen at this point. 
All right. Sounds good. Okay, um, we'll just jump in. This is, we have a pretty open discussions. Um, anything could be added to the agenda. Um, if you think of anything or have colleagues or associates that'd like to jump on and talk about stuff, then um, please invite them. I think as we're moving towards holiday season for a lot of people, it's uh, probably going to be a little light. So uh, speaking of that, we're not going to have meetings on the 26th or the 2nd of January. And I think the next one is the 19th. And Victor Morales, you may be out that time. So I think uh, co-leads on this call, by the way, are uh, myself, Tom Kivlin from Vodafone and Victor Morales from Samsung. So, Victor? Um, I would prefer not to have it, but if that's strictly necessary, let's, let's have it. But I don't know if uh, I plan to take some my vacation that day on that day. You'll already be out. That's that's fine. Um, I think I'm going to be in um, for at least a few days that week. So, Tom, are you going to be around? On the nineteenth of December. Um, no, I will be still on annual leave until January. Oh, all right. Week. Well, maybe maybe we shouldn't have it. Um, let's see, Oliver, are you going to be out? Um, I'm probably going to be here. Okay. Well, it may be light. I guess we can. I'm okay with continuing on the 19th, and if it ends up just being the two of us, we may, you know, end the call in just a few minutes. All right. All right, let's see. Upcoming events, MWC Barcelona. Does anybody know of any anyone going or anything interesting specific? I don't know if we're gonna attend that one. The private 5G and edge event, edge summit. Is that going to be virtual or like uh, should you play? I'm not sure. Uh, Lucinda, do you know about this one? Is that the Telcom TV? I think that's Telcom TV, actually. Mm -hmm. So that would be at least um, partially virtual, if not. Okay. Fully virtual. All right. Well, let's just kind of notice on that. Um, keep kind of you. Uh, the submissions for that are already passed. Cloud Native Telco Day. Uh, just hoping to have the that open already. Definitely want to get things open for that. So in January, now that we're towards the end of the year i think it's there's no reason to try to force it in december but i'll try to get um that open we do need sponsors which will help with what what it will actually be can we do virtual or not we'll need to get sponsors for that um telcos and public cloud summit I don't know what this one is. Is this another telecom TV? It is. And then Open RAN Summit. Is that also telecom TV? Yeah, it is. Or is this, this is open networking, ONF. 
Oh, no, that's June. There's also one. That's interesting. There's one from ONF, which will be in October. Oh, that's 2021. Huh. I'm kind of surprised that. That it's not all together. But I don't see any new events from ONF. All right. Anything else event wise? There's one called, um, I think it's like Connected America. Any of all heard of that one? No. Trend. That's not what I've heard of, no. Yeah. Um, um, it kept coming up and now I can't find it at all. Connected America. Anyways, I was, oh, it is on a, I think I was ignoring the URL. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So, Are y'all, is there anybody, you know, going to this one? It seems like it's, there's a lot of like government, telecom, rural, it's going to be big city. I saw some like the city of Detroit, other large cities. Um, so it seems like there's going to be telecom vendors and, I guess, U.S. telecom operators that are going to be at this. So I was curious if anyone here has any knowledge or seen that in the past. All right. <clears throat> Tell us about Nomad, Mr. Morales. Well, um, I found that article uh, because someone was asking or was having some issues to uh, connect Nomad with uh, with Calico. So, from my understanding, Nomad Nomad is like um, another proposal. Uh, to schedule containers and things like that. I haven't played around with Nomad, but it's like the solution that HashiCorp is proposing to schedule uh, workloads as, as containers. Um, and what I was surprised about this is like uh, they have, they seem like to be already supporting this multi-interface uh, feature that we have in um, continuous in, in Kubernetes. So uh, yeah, basically, I, I just I was just wondering to to know the the use cases and why they decide to. Uh, uh, to be honest, I haven't uh, read all these things uh, about this article, but I found quite interesting, like why this is uh, um, implementing this feature. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I'm not sure if eventually Nomad is going to be a really good alternative to Kubernetes or is going to complement what Kubernetes is offering in, in that terms.
And one of the things that they uh, continually uh, mention about Nomad is that they are following the Google uh, white paper. Uh, so, and, and they, have done, they have done multiple tests to um, prove or support a huge uh, number of uh, uh, workloads. Uh, using a less footprint or things like that. So, uh, in terms of performance, it seems like uh, it's supporting more. But yeah, I'm not sure. Like, if, if someone is considered like Nomad for for telcos or like a particular use case. Is Nomad Kubernetes? What what is it? It's like is a anything. No, it's more like a scheduler, I think so. Like an orchestrator. So that's why I guess is uh, you have to decide to choose uh, Kubernetes or Nomad in that case. But I I could be wrong, like. I was just reading here it's saying that Nomad, there's a, on, a, a comment here on the, on the internet saying that Nomad is not based on Kubernetes. It's an alternative standalone platform. Hmm. Makes sense. HashiCorp has kind of done that the whole time, build their own thing. All right. All right. So let's see. So what do we have here? Uh, going back. They're saying that they support the CNI interface. So they're doing something with. There's no, no reason to do all of this unless they're building, a, it's a container orchestrator at some point. It's our container management or some, however you want to call it. It's, there's definitely some overlap with what Kubernetes is doing. And they're saying the way that they're working there's other ways of tying in networking directly with if you're using docker there's other paths but instead they're using the cni interface so they're that's kind of interesting that they're doing this which was a kubernetes um approach approach yeah so so the idea with kubernetes is build a framework with that's extensible and there can that was pretty early on but there was a lot of stuff that was still built in and over the years more and more and more has been um organically turned into interfaces with standard definitions and stuff on how to work through them but it was built on compatibility of working software so that's kind of where cni and storage interface and all the other different pieces for plugging in different options like this came from and but it's generic enough that it, i guess it can work standalone I presume they're probably not running Hublet and stuff. They're probably running, 
you know, either something directly built off of Doctor, Docker and extended or something else that the HashiCorp has built on their own. And they've made it compatible with that interface. I think that's pretty good um, demonstration of how Kubernetes has made itself very pluggable down to core pieces. Being CNI is very close to the core of everything on Kubernetes. And the fact that you're able to take it and use it somewhere else, I think that's a pretty good indicator of how well they've made things pluggable. Um, anyways, uh, this could be interesting to share with the multi interface um, SIG or working group. I can't remember what it, what it was, multi-interface over in Kubernetes. And then also the, the folks that are working on the Multis, um, not, I'm sorry, not Multis, the Intel CPU policy manager, which is moving towards, I think, essentially the same thing as CNI for plugins. So the, the folks that are working on that are, there's open caps enhancement proposals in Kubernetes for around policy management plugins and stuff to make it general purpose to where we can have other options just like this. I think this like ties in with you know all of these type of ideas. It would be nice if someone takes a look at you know what's happening here. I don't know if they're going to be interested to come talk with us about their approach, but it seems like it'd be better to, you know, get input from them going right into SIG multi network. Okay. It's 2020. I wonder if there's been anything that's already made it. I didn't realize it was that old. Well, the way that I found it was, uh, Based on, let me check. Uh, yeah, so when was, seems like he, he was trying to um, integrate those uh, Calico with a, a Nomad. And in, in that repo, he was uh, referencing, referencing to this other article. Mm -hmm. So, and he was asking help on, on the CNI channel, asking about any. The guidance. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting topic, especially because it's really with multiple networks. And I'm not sure. Uh, it seems like it is not the only one who are facing with that particular use case and he wants to use a uh, other alternatives. So I just want to, uh, particular like the use case, like if that use case is really with uh, something similar to what we have in this talk, or like is something completely different. Uh, where's the use case? This one? No, I haven't found it. I mean, I just start in the morning, so I haven't had time to to, to dig more on um, the details. I, well, here's theirs. They it looks like they actually have a, a use case. What they're trying to do as far as using WireGuard. So they're I don't you know I don't know why they're doing it, but monitoring traffic or you could have a WireGuard. There's a libraries related, so that could get into like packet sniffers and other security stuff. Secure network between two of us. All right. So that seems like they're, oh, okay. So there's specifically a wire guard um, 
device, a virtual device, <clears throat> and then they're wanting to connect between the two and run traffic. Um, have Calico do the connections to run over? That's interesting. So VPN connections over different devices. They're not talking about it, but it almost looks like you'd end up with a sidecar. I don't I don't really understand if when you're coming up why you would why you're needing to worry about another device if everything's going through whatever's providing a, a wire guard tunnel. Yeah. All right. Interesting. I'll drop that there. All right, yeah, thanks, um, Lucina, whoever dropped these. So they, on the Intel CP policy management, this is the plugin was released. And there's a cap, I think there's a whole set of caps and this is one of them. And then there's gonna be a discussion about updates to Kubelet that'll be related to this. Um, one of them is today at 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific. And then again on Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 Central time. Some of that info has been posted in CNCF's public Slack and the CNF test bed dev channel. They're wanting feedback um, on the caps and the discussion. So if you have time or have anybody that's interested in CPU, memory policies, all that sort of thing are gonna be related to what's happening with Kubelet. Um, making it pluggable for different options that could go in, including what Intel has and and then what should be native that'll tie right into what's available for the pods and everything. All right, um, let's see, best practice, just kind of mentioning this to everybody else. You can read down and look at what we talked about before, but looking at ideas for best practices and related content that we could write about, um, add in discussions, docs, and hopefully end up with some more published uh, best practices. And there's a whole set of them. There's a, a large doc about applying least privileges. I think it's linked out of the discussion. You can go check out that for a lot of content here and then even more once you get over in a google doc for that so security best practices there's a set of tests in the cns certification from essential tests there's 15 normal bonus test here's the essential set this whole document list all of them the test suite has more than this so this is in 1.0 beta what it was showing, but there's a lot more in the test suite and there's now one one beta. But um, these are some possible ones. So we're looking at some of these. Um, these are the test names, but SE Linux options. If you're using SE Linux, there's some flags that will make your containers less secure. So turning those off 
um, single process type, talking about uh, the practice, which is uh, older than Kubernetes for trying to split up applications into your microservices, have microservices, uh, this would be a microservice related practice and have your microservices running a single type of process. It may have like sub, if you're familiar with the processes, and how they work in Unix so uh, sub processes or children processes would be of the same type. So you may have multiple processes, but they would be of the same type. So if you're familiar with like mail servers, um, one of them uh, came out from IBM is called Postfix. Another is QMail, which Postfix was based off of. Postfix broke up the different processes for handling mail as a large like mail server. So think IBM size uh, company handling uh, email and you break them all up. So if any different ones have problems, bugs, um, security issues, then you've isolated where the problems are. Um, recovery and stuff can be handled separately, scaling anything else. There's a lot of different parts that affect that. Um, yep, so here's a whole set. Non-root containers, um, that would be one where we already have published. So your processes shouldn't be running under the root or UID zero or the privileged user. Privileged containers is about pods actually running with the priv privileged flag. So these are some of them that we could look at doing and we've listed some of those. Um, the Environmental Sustainability Working Group is another area where we've talked about uh, collaboration and potentially having some best practices. They've released a sustainability document that outlines user stories, use cases. They're going to be putting out some um, continuing from this with other documentation around best practices as well. So working with them and looking at practices that we may want to relate to specific telecom use cases and then write up the best practices could be a, another area. Um, the, there was a webinar from Calico talking about security policy best practices some of it's specific to Calico. I think some of it could be more generalized as far as um, policy implementation for connectivity between pods and other things. And let's see. Um, this is one um, Victor put forward. Um, in our discussion. So a CNS shouldn't depend on a specific kernel version on a host. There's projects like this node feature discovery and some people are using it to look and see what is the specific more details about a host. And it's, I guess it's okay if a CNF takes advantage of um, the additional information requiring it to function like not it won't work at all is really what we're talking about so if a cnf comes up and it only works on one linux kernel version then we would say that's not cloud native mm. oh i see a duplicate one pro oh the one process type per container we actually opened a ticket for that, started writing some stuff out just to get that started. The liveness and readiness, we had a little dis a bit of discussions around this and related to telecom workloads and what that could mean and best practices around that. So this is referencing that the readiness checks that Kubernetes has for any pod coming up. Ideally, those are being used to help um, communicate useful information from CNS 
to each other and to the, the Kubernetes orchestration. Declarative configuration on, on the configuration side, to, uh, being declarative for all CNS. So there is a test around checking for statically configured network addresses. Um, so that could be one. I'm sure there's a lot that we could look at for configuration side. The life cycle of CNS. Um, have some stuff here. Um, operators patterns, we could look into some of that. It looks like, uh, Tom, you may have put something in here. Do you want to talk to that real quick? And then... Yep, I can do. Yes. Um, so when I mentioned about the CNF lifecycle stuff, it was, we've, we've done a bit of work internally about just mapping out how we like, how we'd like to see CNFs be managed. Um, so, you know, quite a lot of that detail is probably a bit too much for best practice, but um, uh, I think we could we could maybe tweak the wording so it's less an FEO specific and more kind of generic, so that kind of any orchestrator can perhaps meet the best practice. Um, but the idea is that we have a good idea then of how the CNF is deployed, how it's configured, how it's scaled, how it heals, et cetera, et cetera. We try and we try and sort of describe if there are any prerequisites and kind of what the description of the use case is. Sounds good. It depends how how much kind of detail we want to go into in the best practice and how kind of standard specific we want to be. Like mentioned things like Tosca and whatnot. From the um like use cases and user story stuff i think it would be good to provide more context or more details and reference um material at a, a minimum about the different things out there that are related and then um we can narrow down as we come to best practices yeah uh, let's see. So, and the other related item would be in the CNF working group documentation. So, the best practices. So, one of the, I guess, primary things for us to get to the point of publishing best practices. So, we did a little work to update this document. I think Robbie. Um, who's at AWS now, had originally put this one forward. And this would be the different categories um, that we have right now. And with that, I'm going to switch over. We actually have a, a pull request to update the categories. And the idea here is to get them more aligned with what's happening with the certification and test suite, as well as simplifying a, a few of these. So now here's the changes listed in this. And I'm going to go ahead and just link it here. Oh, let's see, where are we? Right here. PR, CNF, best. Yeah. All right. Removing hardware support. I don't think there's any test yet. 
um, does work around hardware support would roll into other areas, compatibility configuration. The compatibility got merged into one called installation, um, uh, with installation update called compatibility, installability, and upgradability. Scaling was also merged into those. And then configuration lifecycle is just renamed to configuration. Some of the lifecycle pieces were put into different areas. Um, resilience is renamed reliability, resilience, and availability, and the no change to security state, microservice observability. I'll bring up the actual diff here. So this is what it would look like. There would be start with this compatibility and solubility upgradability, which is a mix of this, mainly the first two, but you could think um, this could, this would tie in with a lot of the life cycle as well, you know, the day zero onboarding a CNF, um, which includes both, what's the compatibility with the environment and platform that a CNF is going to be running on and in, as well as compatibility with other CNFs. So a lot of what's looked at previously was how does the CNF work for when you onboard it in isolation versus how are you going to bring it in and have it be interoperable with multiple CNFs, including across multiple vendors. Um, so that's kind of what that's covering, as well as upgradability. Um, and I think compatibility comes back into this. How are you dealing with the ongoing maintenance of those CNFs, upgrades um, to those? And then if they're running in a workload with multiple vendor CNFs, and how are they working together? So I think all of that kind of ties in. Configuration ends up covering across a lot of different pieces because we're talking, when we're looking at the configuration, you can look at, um, we're really saying that a CNF should, CNF's deployment, implementation, management, it's all declarative. That can get into API as well. So that kind of ties in a little bit with compatibility, but how do you communicate and talk to and configure it? So declarative APIs, declarative configuration, we're talking about um, whether, you know, whatever it may be, Helm or anything else for the deployment, for upgrades, um, for the management of multiple CNS, it's going to cover a lot of areas um, and the whole life of the CNF. Microservices didn't change other than it's maybe its number here. State security didn't change. The scaling primarily is going into these areas. Um, if it makes sense, go somewhere else. We want it to be scalable. I think that has to do with how it's, you know, configuration for how do you respond to its need to scale and other things. So those tie in with a lot of uh, these other items. Observability and diagnostics didn't change. And then resilience, again, is rolling into these, which has been communicated in a, multiple ways. Like, what are we talking about? Availability is the service availability. You may have components that are going down, but it's staying available. Resilience is how it can respond and repair itself or be repaired uh, in different ways. Reliability would be related. Um, and then along with that, with like merging of some of these, the descriptions um, were merged and updated. So you can see. This one's updated. Some of them remain the same. This was just changing the name. 
There we go. Questions? I'd like to get this one merged ASAP because we do have other updates to actually add more content to these sections. Questions, comments? Well, I think it's good uh, so we can proceed to to approve it or yeah I mean if you know if, if everybody can start giving thumbs up on this call would be great and I I, I really mean everybody on the call you don't have to be listed in the reviewers you can go give a it looks good to me, LGTM, um, or plus one or whatever, right in the comment. Oh, looks good to me. It's very clear. Oliver, thank you. Can you add a plus one on the um, end to the? Sure. Thanks. Both victors. <laughs> I just, just approve it, but yeah. Thank you. All right. You dropping yours in, Oliver? You did it. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and merge it. Squash and merge. All right. Delete that branch. All right. Next one, which should be related. We'll see if it actually merges now. It's not going to merge. Um, we need to, I don't know if, if you noticed whenever I was in there, but the some of the best practices that are listed, or maybe all of them, they were just, oh, they're gone. Okay, so what we had before I merged was some examples of best practices that don't actually exist. So we want to start adding them. So Lucina has created a pull request to add the best practice to sender security. This is the non root when I mentioned that before. So that one's pretty straightforward. Um, Oops. Okay, so put it there, put it there. All right. And um, I don't know if I can resolve conflicts. It probably has to do with the the names, the changes here on on where things are. Yeah, that's what it is. So let's see, state, security. Reference, scaling, and it looks like all of that can be deleted. And then it's
That looks right. Whoa. So we have security and adding, adding the non-root, and then after security of the observability. Anyone see any problems with that? Otherwise, I'm going to commit. I think I merged the, fix the conflict and merge them. Yeah, that's good to me. All right, I'm going to mark as resolved, sign off. All right, and now I'm going to add my own review. All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Victor and Oliver. Victor L, you can add yours. I think we have enough, the three of us approve on this one, add it in. It's been published, so we're not really saying, do we like it? I'm gonna add it. But anyone that wants to do a plus one, appreciate it. So it's in the comment. All right. Um, Let's see, what is this one? You're doing a, it just looks like you're updating some grammar. Yeah, that's all it is. That's just, all right. Just a, just a nitpick. That's good. Appreciate it. All right. So I'm not going to look good to me on my own. I've committed that one. Cool. I'm going to hit it again here. So thumbs up. What what this is for everyone else? Um, this is communicating um, a little bit more clearly, what are we doing? Primary goal um, for the group is to provide a set of cloud data um, and Kubernetes best practices for network applications. And then actually give a link. This is right in the read mace is the idea. So that when anyone comes and they go, what are we doing? They say, oh, it looks like you're doing best practices. Well, where are they? Trying to find the best practices has been a little difficult. <clears throat> you can go over this folder and if you look all around, then eventually you'll find it. So this is to make it a little easier. And we send them directly to that document, which we just updated. So in the top of the readme. So if you're talking with someone or they're asking, what does the working group do? Hopefully they can find their way. Taylor, uh, do you apply my suggestion? I would say it was, it's a, it's a nitpick. It's just uh, On this changing one? the, yeah. Instead of like using the hyphen, using asterisk. I don't see a suggest edit. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, see, okay. nothing here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. My my fault. Yeah. I yeah, I just can you do a another request? Oh, you did it already. Yeah, I forgot to click there. I'll do uh, it. All right. Find your markdown. Um Lint person, linting person. That's right. All right. I'm good. It's merged. Um, I'm going to go ahead and squash and merge. All right. Thank you, everyone. So I'm going to go back here. Let's take a look. So that means ideally, I'd probably say link people to right here if you're telling anyone about the working group 
I can see here's where we are. I've already think that maybe this paragraph and this paragraph need to be updated. Um, there's a little redundancy, but at least you can see pretty quickly that here's the best practices. I think that'll get people over. They can come here and we can start getting stuff published with first one being the security one. And ideally we'll get some more in place. Um, through next quarter would be kind of the plan as we are working through some of these and maybe in Q1 we'll have some more ready and published. Thanks everyone. Um, have a good week. I will be on the call on the 19th for anyone that shows up and then the next one will be in the new year. Um, in January, not the second, so the week after the second. Okay, for me, happy holidays for anyone. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Cheers. Cheers, bye. bye.